Today I'm going to be replacing a pressure reducing valve. This is a Zern Wilkins pressure reducing valve. You can see it comes with two fitting adapters, which is very important. The main reason that's important because each of these comes with one of these seals. So even if you don't use these brass rings, you're still going to need this seal. Now you can get different style of fittings. This one is a sweat fitting. You can also get barbs or even pex fittings. So make sure you get the one that's appropriate for your scenario. But if you're not going to be taking all the plumbing apart, if you're going to do it the easy way, like I'm going to be doing it, then all you really need is this seal. But you do need to have both these fittings to get these seals. And then this is the PRV. So this is an NR3 XL. I'm currently using an NR3, so I'm just kind of praying that this is going to fit properly. We can see this is a one inch. So that's for one inch pipe. Yours might be a three quarter inch or a one and a quarter or one and a half. I think those are the most common sizes. My pipe is a one inch, so I'm gonna use a one inch pipe. We can also see the arrow, which is pointing the direction of the water flow. And we got our regulator adjustment up at the top. We can see this one is designed to go from 15 to 75 PSI. So you're not gonna be able to turn the water completely off with this, but you're also not gonna be able to go above 75 PSI. And the maximum rating that you can have inlet going to this is 400 PSI. Most city pressure is not gonna be anywhere near that. Now these are preset from the factory, or at least usually, and usually it's marked on here what it's set at, but this one is a mark that's usually 50 psi so we'll check that out okay so it does say that all valves are preset to 50 psi it also says that it should be installed by a qualified licensed plumber what i was noticing was if i turn the water on and then flush the toilet the pressure gets real low so that might be a flow problem due to a constricted PRV. So, right now we have 100 psi so that is way overkill. We should not have any problems with low with that. But it is possible that these bibs are actually bypassing what's going on in the house. So I'm going to throw this on my water heater. And this is a pretty common thing to do. It's also worth mentioning that uh, they'll all say thermal expansion that you should put this thing on vacation. I'm just going to test it like this and see what we get. Okay, so that is showing 100 PSI as well. So we've got way too much pressure. Now, if you look at this PRV, we can see this bolt is pretty much bottom all the way out. So I'm guessing the last owner had the same problem we're having where it wasn't enough flow. So they just kept on increasing the pressure, trying to get more. I'm hoping the problem is right here in the PRV. I'm just gonna swap this out and see if that makes a difference. All right, so what we wanna look at here is that the arrow is pointing to the right. So we wanna make sure when we install the new one, the flow is to the right and shut off the water. And then we're gonna drain the water from the house. So we want one wrench to brace it and then the other one to crack the nut. And this is a two inch wrench. Yeah, and you can see there, they are not that tight. And it shouldn't be that tight because if it's too tight, it can actually damage that little gasket. So there it is, not that big of a deal. And this one actually had a little screen. That's neat, I don't think mine actually has that. At this point, we wanna really clean off this surface because we want this gasket to make a good seal. I'm just gonna take a wire brush. Don't need to go too crazy on it. You just wanna make sure that everything is cleaned off. So step one, uh, be a qualified licensed plumber. Step two, flush the supply line. So we're gonna try to remove anything that could be in there. We'll do that just by turning it on real quick. Lots of pressure. And now we're gonna open these bags, pull out our gasket. I need a gasket from both sets. Make sure they fit. That looks good. Yeah, that's gonna be perfectly fine. So if you need to upgrade from an NR3 to an NR3 XL, that is is the same fit as long as the threads are the same so we're going to find that here in just a second okay cool we are in business so there's a few more threads on this one than this one you can just see it's tapped further down but 
Same fit. There we go. All right. So for how hard you want to tighten it, just get it to finger tight and then give it about a quarter turn. That should be it. So now we're going to slowly crack this on. So we are pressurized. There's no leaks here. Open that the rest of the way up. And it looks like we didn't lose any pressure there. So now I just need to get the air out of the line. All right. I want to check the hot water as well. We'll let that run for not too long, 30 seconds or so. And we'll see what we got now. We are now at just above 50. So let's see what that looks like. There you go. So we actually have less pressure, but it didn't go down at all when we flushed the foot. So that's what I was looking for. And this might be a little hot. So that's it for replacing it. Now, if you want to adjust the pressure, you loosen up this nut so it's just a lock nut. And then if you turn this clockwise, like that, that will increase the pressure. And if you turn it counterclockwise, that will reduce the pressure. Now I'm just gonna put this tag facing forward so it is easily red. I got a bucket under here, so I'm just gonna check that back in like an hour or two, and I'm gonna leave that there for like a day. And then if there's no drips, then I know we are good. So that's it, nice and easy.